What's up guys, it's Jay with Tech Everything. Recently Coursera released their H5 SF, which is the first, to my knowledge, the first small form factor liquid cooler on the market. Let's check it out. In the box you get the cooler, along with mounting hardware for both Intel and AMD processors. So here it is. On the front, you have your rad, which is 167 by 57 by 40 millimeters, so a very small rad. Underneath you will see your blower style fan, 120 millimeter fan by 32, so that's a pretty substantial fan. It's pretty thick, and it actually has a good, good weight to it. There's also padding on the front here, so if you put it flush up against your case, it will connect and it will expel as much air as possible without letting it leak back into the case. So that's kind of cool. Underneath you have a copper base plate, it connects to your CPU. Each piece has its own power connector. The base plate has a three pin for the pump and the fan has a four pin for the fan. So what's all the fuss about and why would you get one of these? Well, the traditional style all-in-ones that you've all seen like this where you mount this to your case and this to your CPU there's really no space for them in a small form factor build like this this is my PC there's no there's no way to mount something like this in here there really just isn't there's not enough sidewall for the exhaust there's not enough space at all in steps Corsair with this guy and as you can see by the dimensions it actually would fit in there and then it can exhaust out the back where there is an exhaust port. So for small form factor builders, this is really something that's very cool. You could run overclocked K parts where you previously probably couldn't because there's not sufficient space for a quality air cooler or liquid cooling of any kind. Now the way Corsair got around the space restrictions is obvious. You can see the blower style with the small rat. But what wasn't obvious to me was how it was actually going to mount to your computer. Now the way they did that was really clever. As you can see this L-shaped bracket here has three holes that you mount to your motherboard where the normal motherboard standoffs would go. It sits right on top and then there are three more holes where you mount these taller standoffs. And then the standoffs just sit on top like that. So it just comfortably sits on top of your motherboard and it, it is really stable. It's, it's super clever and there's enough clearance here for normal height RAM, all that good stuff, uh, and obviously plenty of space for the pump right here. After some slight modifications to my case, here is the H5 SF fully installed. So how does the H5 SF perform? Well, I pitted it against one of the most popular small form factor or low profile coolers there is, the Noctua LN9i. So let's check out the results.
So as you saw for actual cooling, the H5SF was far superior to the 92LN9i. It definitely, definitely does a better job when you're pushing your CPU to the limit. At idle, there's really no difference. But obviously this is built more towards uh, overclockers and stuff like that. On to the sound test. Now this is where I was most concerned about the H5SF. It has a radiator with super, super dense fins and a blower style fan. If you've ever had a graphics card with a blower style fan, you know how loud they can be. I was very concerned. Let's see what the results were. As for the noise level, the H5SF definitely disappointed me. Even at its lowest setting that I could put it, which was 20% with the ASUS motherboard fan controls, it was still really, really loud. I would say the 20% here was almost as loud as this, maybe at 60 or 70%. Now the cooling is better. You do get better cooling for that. But if you're trying to have a small home theater PC or just a quiet PC in general, I definitely would not recommend this guy. It cools great, but it is loud. So should you buy an H5SF? Well, that depends on how you're gonna use it. If you're running a K-Part and you wanna overclock, do stuff like that, you can't fit a larger air cooler or all-in-one or custom liquid loops, I would say it's definitely a good option. It, the temperature's dropped, in my experience, 25 degrees from my LN9i, which is a really, really good, but low-profile cooler. Uh, it does take up a decent amount of space as you saw, but the low profile really helps if you're building a small compact system. So I definitely would recommend checking it out. The only thing to consider is the noise. As we saw earlier, it is very, very noisy, especially if you're coming from a quiet fan. I, that, that for me is a deal breaker. I like really quiet systems. But if you're overclocking, there might really not be another option for you. If you want to fit a K part inside a case that's really small and compact. So it's definitely a good cooler, a quality cooler. Uh, the temps were consistent over time. I didn't have any issues with it other than the noise. So thanks for watching, guys. As always, I'm Jay. This is Tech Everything. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you like the video. I'll see you next time.